Hey guys, welcome to the video on Bharat in Germany. My name is Bharat and in this episode of Non-Engineering Courses in Germany, we are going to talk to Shiti who is actually, who has done her bachelor's in physiotherapy and is doing a very interesting course right now in University of Paderborn in Germany. Shiti, welcome to the channel. Tell us a bit about yourself Hi. and then we jump into the questions. Okay, so uh, my name is Shiti Chitte and I come from Mumbai, Maharashtra. And here in Germany, I'm doing my master course uh, and the course name is MSc Applied Neurosciences in Sports and Exercise. And this course I'm doing in Un University of Paderborn. How was it for you? Like, how did you come across the idea of coming to Germany? Because most of the people want to come to Germany for engineering. How were you exposed to the idea of Germany first? So uh, to be honest, my first priority was to go to Canada because as many people might be knowing that people who do a bachelor in physiotherapy course, they either want to go to US, Canada, Australia, or UK perhaps, and they never think of European countries. So even I had the same ideology that, okay, fine, I want to go to Canada. But uh, I started to learn Spanish and I got an opportunity to come to Spain where I enrolled myself in a language course. And that was my first time that I was traveling to a foreign country. And then I was in my fourth year of my graduation. And I decided that, yes, I would like to come to Europe again instead of going to Canada. And then I just uh, went through a lot of countries, I would say so from, yeah, Spain, France, Portugal, Denmark, Germany, Belgium, Netherlands, everywhere. And I wanted to start my course immediately, my master course after I finished my bachelor's. So I wanted a uh, English taught course. So I had three options, uh, Germany, Netherlands, and Belgium. And of course, my first priority was Germany. But I ended up applying at all the three places because I did no like I yeah. did not know anyone who came to Germany with my background. So yeah, it was kind of a difficult journey, I would say, with all the preparation and finding universities. But yeah, I'm happy that I could come here and I'm studying. About the part of your bachelor's, because you told me like it's four and a half years um, bachelor's. So is it like common in India? Because I'm not aware of that. The course uh, that I did is four and a half your course mm -hmm. and it is bachelor of physiotherapy also called as bpth mm -hmm. and it was offered yeah it is offered by the maharashtra university of health sciences mm -hmm. so since it is a medical background course it is a bit longer than the usual so normal bsc courses would last around three years mm -hmm. but my course is four and a half years and as we know mbbs courses are for five and a half years. So mm. the six months that I had in my course is for internship. Okay, that's nice. Yeah, Perfect. so it was four years of the curriculum and then six months of internship that we had mm. to do. Now let's talk a bit about the options that you had, you know, because like you told me about Belgium, Netherlands and Germany, and you said like <laughs> you wanted to come for an English taught program. So what were the kind of courses that you were able to find so far before deciding on the current course that you're studying right now? I was uh, flexible uh, with the courses. So I was fine uh, anything for, uh, which is near to my field. Mm -hmm. So options I had were something like sports and exercise science, which are mostly English taught. So my focus was this aspect and also neuroscience courses. But the problem with neuroscience courses is with the prerequisites because I faced even rejections from for this course mm -hmm. because they want uh, a background from uh, coding. Oh, so like, with, how does it make sense? Uh, like for example, uh, for example, for machine learning. Mm -hmm. So neuroscience and machine learning is also integrated. Mm. Like yeah. So that for they sports would management, want... it just like sounds very weird that they would have somebody from computer science or something. Uh, no, for neuroscience. So if someone has a good uh, background, mm -hmm. for example, if I, I'm not sure, like biomedical engineering, if yeah. So if mm -hmm. someone does yeah, that yeah. course, then of course they can enter into neuroscience yeah, as yeah. well. So I just wanted to uh, get into a course which was near to my field. So I had these options of uh, neuroscience, sports and exercise science, but somehow neuroscience doesn't, uh, like it didn't fit my 
prerequisites and my background so i faced rejections but the other courses yes i got through it let's uh, talk a bit about your course right now so you are in the second year you have gone through the first two semesters yeah did you have to take some online semester or like classes previously when you were still in your was it everything everything worked out fine like tell me a bit about all of this so uh, the course is msc applied neurosciences and sports and exercise and uh, when i was looking at the courses in germany this is one and the only course that is offered by university of paderborn which is a combination of neuroscience and sports which is why i chose this course because none of the other places were offering this combination and the second thing oh uh, yeah everything is online taught right now i finished uh, my second semester and right now i am in my summer break but i have to also write for my exams so yeah it's a busy holidays yeah. but but i think uh, even if everything was online i did not uh, feel like i'm missing on major aspects because uh, even if it's online they have designed the course very beautifully that mm-hmm. they can also execute it online mm-hmm. of course we missed a uh, few of the practical sessions but uh, for example for the neurological part so in the second semester we had an opportunity where we could go and uh, see where, uh, and be with the neurological patients performing group exercises for you're getting treated for the symptoms this mm-hmm. wasn't possible but it didn't affect my uh, learning because in my bachelor of physiotherapy i had also worked with neurological patients so mm-hmm. it was fine for me but yeah but being into german culture and that is what was missing mm. yeah yeah i i believe that and that's what i wanted to ask next and because i know like in physiotherapy like you'd be working with like you know so many people and if you're working in germany like german most of the times is like you know pretty much mandatory like did you see some kind of issue so far where like somebody hinted that like it's better that you start learning german already to get a better job afterwards or like what are your experiences there i think oh uh, after so with this course in this course we have people from different backgrounds so there are people who have just uh, done their bachelors in sports and exercise science or occupational therapist physiotherapist so it really depends upon uh, what a person wants to do afterwards mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. i would say that if a person wants to enter into the rehabilitation and be in contact with patients then yes of course german is mandatory that they mm-hmm. should know but it just it is just upon their personal preferences i would say okay so far have you started learning german yes yeah, so it's yeah i am right now at my a2 level mm-hmm. and i the problem with me is that i have to improve my speaking mm-hmm. to be honest but i do not find uh, much opportunities to yeah. go out and speak to people because of uh, corona like mm-hmm. the social gatherings are a little bit restricted have you been able to go out at all like with some of your batchmates or something or that hasn't happened yet it has happened it has happened so uh, we know each other due to our zoom meetings during the classes and also we had a lot of uh, group projects and assignments to do so yeah i have known them and i have also yeah met but since the course is english taught then it is like making more effort yeah to to be able to talk in german i'm working i can't say that i'm working but i somehow yeah ended up finding a physiotherapy clinic which could like just take me and uh, so that i can just volunteer and be around with the patients and i can treat them also there i am right now improving the medical aspect of my german where i can yeah, give them instructions to perform mm-hmm. exercises okay. and ask okay how how are they doing right now Do you understand most of it or is it like not yet there? Understanding is not a problem. Okay. I understand. Yeah, but to speak it's yeah, <laughs> a little bit problematic, yeah. yeah. So I can tell you a tip from my own experience. Um I personally think like you know speaking is like very overrated. Like many people say that like if you have to like practice speaking, practice speaking and so on. But the thing is like if if the sentence structures and like if your writing is not that great because most of the times what you do is like you're building sentences in your mind and then you speak them mm-hmm. out and it's just like the more proficient you are in like just your vocabulary and also like writing and stuff 
like the easier you will find it to like, you know, speak out. And of course, then like comes the practice part where you actually have to like, just keep on speaking. But I do believe a lot of that is also like kind of very connected to your writing skills. Like if you like yeah. try to write more and like, you know, try to mm-hmm. write different kind of like um, sentences, conversations and so on, that is also going to help out in the speaking part for sure. Try, to, yes. try that because for me, like it was um, also like very different. I, I was in a small city um, in Haryana um and my bachelor's was like it was almost a village where my university was so there's no good language institution there's nothing so i bought some books online and i was watching a lot of youtube videos and i was just like you know learning german like that and it worked out pretty well so in five months i was able to go to b2 level but i had a separate desperation like for me it was if i don't get to b2 i'm done i will have to waste half a year or something and i have to like really push through and it worked out and i think in Germany, if you're like, you know, spending out, let's say one or two hours a day and on the weekends, if you're spending like eight hours, I think you should be like, you know, re- you should be on track for B2, like, you know, till December or something. I, th- I think it should work out. So the next mm-hmm. thing is I want to apply for the license. Mm-hmm. So here it is a medically yeah, protected or legally protected title of a physiotherapist. Okay. So we cannot work directly. So it's very difficult to find a job a part-time job in our profession itself yeah so okay. we have to take an exam with the Gesundheit exam to the health officer which is a oral exam so mm-hmm. for that I would of course need German so I'm going yes. to <laughs> yeah yeah that's very important and uh, did you already like see some kind of formats or something is it difficult easy the university where I did my bachelor of physiotherapy the number of credits uh, that I have it is already uh, enough for the German authorities. Mm-hmm. So it, that's not a problem. We, mm-hmm. we just have to apply and give all our transcripts and do all the documentation process. And they will take approximately three to four months and be like, okay, fine, your documents are perfect and there's no problem and we can give you the license, but you have mm-hmm. to make an exam with the Gesundheit exam. Okay. So we just locally make an appointment and go for the oral exam. Okay. then that's done and we just then have to provide a uh, medical checkup documents and the police verification mm-hmm. and after that yeah we can have the license but i have also heard uh, people from other countries who have bachelors in physiotherapy they have to take some additional courses here to uh, complete their credits so it just depends on uh, personal or uh, like from person to person how yeah more on the university that. yeah like yeah. how many like you know credits you started for example i got a rejection in tuhh uh, in the starting because they said like i have lesser credits in maths and mechanics and things like that but it's like i cannot change what i studied right it, it's the same subjects that you will study anywhere so i think exactly. like this is the nice thing where like they give you the option of like covering up extra credits so that you can like yeah you know, because apply. because we give a declaration that this is the first time that we are applying for the license so and we can only apply once mm-hmm. For the license so of course they will provide <laughs> us with the opportunity to yes yeah fulfill their requirements i think one another tip i can give you is about the german bureaucracy so i think like when you're doing any kind of application for the licenses and so on it is very important that you never change your address or your place because it just stretches out so much longer because many times mm-hmm. then you have to like redo all of the paperwork and you have to tell them the new like you know um address and they will most probably ask you to file out the applications again which is very stupid so i was stuck in this it was not a physiotherapist license but it was like you know my um, standard paperwork in this driving license part and there um i was in hamburg and i saw it happen to another person for blue card like it was again like you know a very interesting story so you see like it is happening over and over again i was in hamburg when i applied we moved to another city in another state uh, when it was like getting processed that screwed up everything they were like okay we are going to now send the documents to this place but they never came so i had to run behind them and tell them hey like you know where my documents where my documents and so on so i think it's better that you like you know have the same address when you go going through any kind of bureaucratic process in germany yeah. because i'm going to uh, yeah change my accommodation at the end of this month so okay. yeah i'm i think i'm before and time yeah 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 just just keep in mind because these kind of small things can cause problems you never know in the starting but um it's better that you that in mind 
Perfect. And now yeah. with the job opportunities, Shiti, like what kind of um, job opportunities can people expect? And like, what are the standard salaries if you come to know about anything like that? Standard uh, salaries, nothing as of now. I have an idea about, but uh, I think, oh, for example, one of my friend, uh, she's also a physiotherapist and she was uh, on her Erasmus program in mm-hmm. Germany in Zabrucken. And there she just happened to inquire uh, at one of the places for or at a physiotherapy clinic. And she said that oh, what she can offer is 18.5 euros per hour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which is yeah i think that is good uh, but i think it depends on the employer not bad. because um, 3000 euros per month yeah i think it depends upon the employer because uh, they have to uh, register us with the health insurance company so that is the thing that okay they will tell the health insurance company that this is the new physiotherapist working in my uh, clinic Mm. and then she can start to uh, he or she can start to give us patients to treat by herself mm-hmm. so yeah, i think it really depends on the employer that yeah. which can if she, yeah which kinds of health insurance company yeah she is registered under or yeah Makes but sense. Uh, with our yeah with our profession like if if i think that with just this master course people doing it with various background we get a title of a sports scientist Mm-hmm. so i think it it just really depends on personal choices if they want to be into rehabilitation or either people can also do a phd which is a good option if mm-hmm. they want to be in the academic field itself like i don't know maybe i'm stretching this a bit but because i don't know the field very well um is it also possible like you know after your masters to go into like proper like you know these sports clubs or something and like get a job there um i don't know like what kind of like opportunities you might find further from neurosciences i was just thinking like i don't know be a part of a football team or something yeah 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 it's possible because for example at my uh, university itself or uh, one of the professors or uh, he like he will uh, he and his team will do a pre-season testing for all the athletes for the baseline testing Mm-hmm. and then for example during the match like during the games when they play if they have any injuries so they will come to the lab to get themselves tested so mm-hmm. yeah this is one of the things that we can be a part of so mm-hmm. having all the baseline testing for the athletes and also if you're a physio then you can also be a part of the sports physiotherapy community perfect yeah i think that's that's yeah. nice that's what many people want to know <laughs> um exactly. i would be also like you know kind of interested in that i was like okay neurosciences something with sports i think what if a uh, football team possible but uh, we should be able to approach the right kind of people yeah. to grab this opportunity mm-hmm. and also maybe to uh, begin with for example if someone wants to be a sports physiotherapist then to work at a clinic which also has sports physiotherapy and to gain some experience specifically for a particular sports or a particular type of injury which is common in uh, athletes like mm-hmm. acl injuries and then okay you can enter into a proper club and just retain yourself there in your entire journey of coming to germany and now studying and stuff like um are there some other advices tips or anything else that comes to your mind that you would like to share with the viewers one thing uh, that i would like to share is uh, please take your academics during your bachelor's very seriously because uh, when when i once i started with my bachelor's i knew for sure that i want to go abroad and my aim was at least to have 70 percentage in my uh, and like in every year and maybe a good aggregate of 75 when that's possible mm-hmm. and this is what i achieved and i think because of that i could come here uh, because when i convert my grades it is a 2.4 german grade mm-hmm. and which is really at the brim because many of the universities say that your grade should be 2.5 or less than 2.5 mm-hmm. so yeah it is very important because of uh, when you come from a medical background it is very difficult to score marks yeah so this is one thing that i would like to say that because people reach into third or fourth year of their uh, education and then they are like oh uh, i want to go abroad but they cannot because they do not have the required percentage to mm-hmm. even apply 
that makes sense i think like this is something that people should keep in mind um and also like with these very specific fields like you do not have so much choice essentially because you will not like find crazy amounts of like you know um courses in the same field in english short program so like that's another thing that i think people should keep in exactly. mind so better that you focus yeah. on the bachelor's score but if people want to come to germany to immigrate here and from a medical profession then i think it's pretty yeah manageable at least for physiotherapists because we just have to apply for a license and it is fine people will get it so that's not a problem but if they want to come here for education then yes so that's good um then shiti thank you so much for like getting on this call and telling me about your experience of this like completely interesting like field and i'm going to put the title and everything i think nicely after taking a look on the <laughs> university's page and like not messing anything yeah. up yeah so Perfect. yes thank you so much again and it was yeah overwhelming to even talk to you <laughs> i never <laughs> i never thought yeah that oh this might happen <laughs> no i think like it's it's better it's it's better to have like some kind of like you know knowledge base and i think um it's very nice that like you really helped us out with that too i hope it's helpful and it helps yeah, a lot of people to come to germany yeah thank you so much guys for watching this video and uh if you have any kind of questions whatsoever write it down in the comment section below when the video comes out i will let shiti know so that maybe if there are some specific questions she can also respond to your comments directly in the video thank you so much again for watching i'll see you in the next one bye